God damn it. I am happy but stressed at the same time. Nayam is so cute though when he was like a little boy. He's like a little cinnamon roll. Like I don't even need to see his adorable cute face to know that he is adorable when he was a little kid. We know that it will kill us all if we saw how adorable he is as a kid. Even though like we're just seeing the back, like you kind of just want to squish him. Like he's so cute, especially when they show his cute little butt. Like, oh my God, he's so cute. Even though we don't see the actual face of Nayeon when he was a baby. But man, I bet you. He would have been very adorable. Before we get started, I just want to remind our viewers that if you like seeing more Yaoi content and would like to support this channel, please don't forget to smash that like button. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Feel free to message me in my social media at zealedfujoshi, which I'll be using to interact with viewers about more Yaoi content. If that's something that interests you, feel free to follow me at Zealed Fujoshi. Finally, this episode will contain explicit content and a lot of manual spoilers. With that in mind, please proceed with caution. You have been warned. Now, without further ado, let's jump into Chapter 94 of Painter of the Night. So now that we've gotten all the cuteness that we will ever extract in this chapter out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty of all of the angst that we're gonna feel in this chapter. First and foremost, I just wanna I just wanna point out that I find it really, really suspicious that our Lord Sungha, I mean the first uh panel in this chapter is of water from the well and then we are shown that Sungha is looking at this well and it seems like there's a certain significance with this well and I just kind of find it suspicious that the last time that we saw Hena Nuna was with Sungha as Sungha is threatening Nuna and now Sungha is okay with sleeping over as if he knows that Hena Nuna is not gonna interfere with him and Nayam and kind of makes me worry that maybe, just maybe, <laughs> Sungha threw Hena Nuna into the well. It's making me nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> like, if that is the case, like, it's really not gonna look good for Sungha because there's another problem that's arising right on the corner and it really is falling on Zungha right now and I don't feel good about it. I just want to point out though that um, even though kind of feels like this whole in-hunt thing that's going on kind of makes it look like Zungha is behind it. I don't know about the henna thing. I'm just gonna speak out about the in-hunt thing right now. Like, um, I kind of don't think that Songha is behind the whole um, in Han thing, though. I feel like the whole sequence of how Byunduk told the story of Painter of the Night since this new season started kind of feels like it's out of order, as if she's really confusing all of us on the um, occurrence of this events as if like the way that we are reading this series is not the exact order of 
how the whole in hunt thing is um occurring and i really tried my best to paste everything that i could find and i just found little bits and pieces of clues that could and couldn't be pointing to whoever killed Inhan. Don't get me wrong though, I still don't know who killed Inhan. But I have a couple of theories that I wanted to discuss in this episode. And but I just wanted to start out that I I'm willing to bet that the sequence of this whole thing is really um out of order and we as fans need to figure out how Byunduk is deceiving all of us right now and what i mean by that is i first had this suspicion when we were told that there has been letters being sent to um Nayam and it seems like Nayam is not getting any of these letters um, from Hena because we've been so focused before on the whole honeymoon stage that they were going on and then um, that Yoon like disrupting the whole order of things and I kind of feel like right now Daddy Yoon the whole event with Daddy Yoon is just to um, sidetrack us that there could have been events that has happened before Daddy Yoon came that would warrant everything that's about to unfold. And let, let's break it down a little bit, right? So um, before we do though, I just want to say to like... Um, I was also not a big fan of how Nayeon was just talking about Inhan in this chapter. Like, I kind of feel like Sung is about to go on a PTSD attack soon, and he's gonna go violent really soon. And like, to be honest, like I'm also getting tired of it. And I'm really am sick of hearing about this scholar, like how Nayeon like think so highly of Inhan. I really don't think so nicely of Inhan. I really hate the guy. But the thing is, this is Nayam's first love. So we can't, even though how much I hate Inhan, I can't, you know, disregard Nayam's feelings. But I, in this chapter, the whole time I was reading it, I kind of, I kind of side with Songha, imagining how Songha would feel. And I really do wish that Nayeon would just shut the hell up about Inhan already. But see, this is how masterful Byunduk is. Like, she made me feel so much... Like, I don't really feel a lot of anger towards Nayeon, but in this chapter, I really felt like I really wanted to say to Nayeon, like, shut the hell up about Inhan. But like, the way Byunduk um, set it up this whole chapter was exactly like that like she wanted us to like think about like maybe she was aiming for making Songha jealous which she did um she did really well like Songha was bursting with like jealousy in this chapter and then like we thought like this might just lead to another fight with this two. But no, like, Byunda completely turned the, this whole thing around. And like, <laughs> yes, people like, like, Nayam finally confessed his feelings to Sungha and like, all of the negativity that I was feeling with Nayom at the beginning of this chapter disappeared. Like, after seeing him confess, it just really gave me the butterflies while reading this chapter because, you know, like I said, I am pissed off the way Nayom is bringing up 
in Han, but like, man, like how Nayeon clutches from saying to Songha of his previous feelings about in Han, but man, like he clutches, like Nayeon clutches to, you know, saying that he's not in love with in Han anymore. He's really in love with Sangha this time and reaffirming the fact that he's not gonna go away he's gonna stay by Sangha's side and he is in love with Sangha and you know like there's this strange feeling in this manhwa that is so precious when this whole confession unfolded in front of i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one who felt that i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys felt that strange feeling of preciousness when nayam finally declared his feelings and you know we know that there's gonna be a lot of heartbreak um heading towards us soon but there are so many things that you know i mean first of all like we know a bad thing is about to happen because now that we've seen all of these happy moments between nayam and sangha their first date meeting the sisters the confession we've been spoiled with so many happy moments that we are bound for a heartbreak soon and it's really making me scared and everything looks suspicious to me right now and you know my man, my <laughs> my Sungha is not looking too good. <laughs> like it, it, it's nice to get the confession and everything, but Sungha is suspicious as hell. Like it's so obvious that he is hiding something from all of us and what it is. It could be what's at the very end of this chapter that just punches us right into the face because we are while Nayam is confessing to Sangha at the Yoon household. Let's remember Sungha and Nayam right now is in the Kesang house. They're not in the Yoon's you know premises. Somebody goes to the Yoon's house and he's carrying basically an ancient body bag <laughs> that's their way of bringing corpses back then and there is a very noticeable hat a scholar's hat similar to inhan's hat on top of that body and we know it's a man because the hand is big but we don't see the face I don't think Byunduk is gonna show us a bloody corpse, but I just wanna say that unless one of the main characters that's not a suspicious F confirms that it is Inhan, I don't wanna believe yet that it's Inhan. I know it's kind of it's kind of funny to me because I know in my previous chapter 93, um review i did say like unless i see a dead body i'm not gonna believe that inhan is dead and now like i kind of feel like biontok is listening that here she is like she's presenting me like a dead body but i still don't believe i still don't believe unless somebody that's not suspicious really confirms that inhan's face is attached to that dead body I'm not gonna believe that it's in Han. Anyway, so what is going on in Ch Painter of the Night? I say, aside from the beautiful um, confession from Nayo, we have a murder mystery that we have to unveil. And please let me know in the comment section of what you think is happening in Painter of the Night. But I have a couple of, um, I have a couple of um theories of how this could unfold right like i said like i don't believe that 
that's in Han yet unless somebody confirms it. But the most easiest um, theory in this whole thing is Sung Ha might have killed In Han. It has been teased before that Sung Ha will be very jealous of In Han in this season of Painter of the Night. So, you know, we, we, we have talked about this in the previous chapters that maybe out of jealousy, Sung Ha could have gotten In Han killed. He is far away, far away from Sung Ha. And it's, you know, not with not outside the realm of reality. You know, with everything that's going on, Sung Ha really does hate In Han. So he has a lot of reasons to kill the man or have the man killed. But um You know, like it kind of seems to me like it's so easy to just pin it down on Sung Ho. And like I said, like I feel like Byun Duk is such a master of storytelling and illustrations that he she's really making us feel like Sung Ho is the one that killed In Han because she does this whole body reveal the moment that Nayam confessed his feelings and we are shown this full-blown face of like regret on Sung Ha's face and I think like it's so convenient for it to be Sung Ha. I know like it's so obvious that it could be Sung Ha, he has every reason but hear me out. You know, there's also a possibility that this is really a misdirection, right? This comes to my second theory. And that Song Ho didn't kill the scholar In Han. I don't know who did it, but if I'm a betting girl, I would think it would be Min. And he did it to guilt Song Ho because. Remember, like, Min is still out there with Jiwa and No Name, and they're plotting some something to um, separate Song Ho from Nayeon. And we know that they have a plan because, like, Jiwa or Min um, before said that when um, at the end of the previous season that when Nayam saw the jester's face, non no name's face, that they have to make their plans faster now that Nayam has seen no name's face. And I would think that they do have a plan in mind. We just didn't know what it was at the previous season. And now with all of these murder mysteries going on, kind of feels like this is their plan like maybe they are planning to um guilt Sungha into a murder that he did not commit and Min probably paid the no name to do it so that one Nayam loses his trust in Sungha and two he can finally separate Sungha from Nayam so that he can get his hands on Nayam and this is like all for Min's benefit and you know this seems to me would make more sense for the story of Painter of the Night because I, I, I Min has all the reasons to pin this kind of thing to Sungha. And plus, we know that Min is not against the idea of getting a man killed because this is the same demeanor that he showed when he told Jiwa to get Nayam murdered before, right? So, I wouldn't be surprised that if he's gonna go to that route again to 
get his hands on Nayam. But that's not my only theory. I have a third theory. And like I said before this whole theory thing started that we haven't seen a face, right? So what if um just a big if since we didn't see the face, there could also be a possibility that is not in Han's body. That that body could be like someone else. Who that someone else could be, I look back on previous chapters and thought of whose body is missing in this whole series. There was a murder that happened last season, but we never saw the body, right? And I'm referring to the servant that used to serve under Song Ha. This is the man that used to bully Nayam and even put small rocks on Nayam's food. And what happened to this guy is that No Name killed this man. And we never saw the body. This body that we are seeing in this uh, end of the chapter could be that servant. Because one, he's a man. And two, has a big big hand right and you know but there's one question that might be wondering majority of you of why you would think it cannot be this servant and i'm pretty sure you're wondering about the servant why would a servant have the hat of a scholar right well there's also the possibility that you know Min, Jiwa, No Name, and Inhan are all in cahoots now, right? And that they probably form this weird tag team to take Song Ha down. So if these four are all together in one team, it wouldn't be hard for them to grab a hat or like Inhan could give the hat this man. And, you know, if they... Um, do this way, like they can succeed in separating Songho from Nayam and also pin down this whole murder down to Songho, right? And I kind of feel like when Songho is down, uh, Songho is gone. And Nayam is all alone and no one is there to defend him. Min can get his way with Nayam. Jiwa gets to separate Songho and Nayam. No name can finally like close this weird chapter in his life with Songho and Nayam. And Inhan can finally best Songho finally, right? So you know. I also like this theory a lot because like you know it would really add a lot of layers into Painter of the Night if like this four would be in the same team to take down Stonka. And I would I am really leaning on theory number two, which is that Min is the one who's behind the murder. And theory number three that um, Inhan might not be dead, and this is just um, all Min's plan because um, I, I feel like the timing of Min in the previous chapter 92 is too perfect and so fishy as hell. Like, the moment that I saw Min in chapter 92, I know he's up to no good. And like I said, like, I found it weird that he was walking around with Kesang's kind of like um, reminding Nayam, knowing that Nayam will see the Kesang girls, that Nayam should see, um, should see his sisters. It may be in order to meet henna or maybe just to steer 
um, Song has PTSD if Song has says no to taking Nayeon to yeah. the Kesang house. But you know, like now that they are in the Kesang house, I am also worried for Hena. To be honest, like if Min is behind all of these, and like let's say that Songha really isn't the one who's like even hurting Hena. Like, it could also be Min because I really do find it fishy that Min said in chapter 92 that Nayam, I shall see you again, like, soon. He said soon. <laughs> like, what does it mean by that? Like, we know that Sungha doesn't want Nayam close to, to anyone. So, like, why would he say, like, he would see Nayam soon? Like, that is so... So suspicious of men. Anyway, those are all my theory on this whole murder mystery that um, Bian Duck is setting up for us. It's kind of fun doing all of these theories. I love it when Bian Duck does this. There's so many things that we can talk about. Um, I also would like to applaud her for the last panel because you know, Sungha's face is so priceless at the last panel because that is the face of a man who knows he effed up. <laughs> but I also hate the fact that we have to wait a couple of weeks until February 11 for us to find out um what's gonna happen is it gonna be another steamy night in the you know Nayeon and Sungho room or like are they gonna be dragged out of the Kesang house because there's a murder going on um that Sungho might be involved in um we don't know we have to wait sadly until February 11 to find out um but I do feel like Beyond Duck really deserves this rest. Um, because this is such a beautiful chapter. I just want to really say, like, how much I love Beyond Duck for this beautiful chapter because I love that she made my heart flutter this whole chapter and left us curious. Like, we were in, like, we were down in the low because we thought that they were gonna have a fight and then we were in the highs when you know Nayam clutches and confesses to Nayam and then we <laughs> she left us on the high and then curious about you know Sungha's answer eh, to Nayam's confession and then like this whole murder mystery started like I, I, I really just need to give this woman like um a big round of applause because like you know he really did a good job like this author needs a break and she has physical issues and she doesn't get the sleep that she needs and we as fans just needs to thank her and appreciate appreciate her good work she's so talented and she deserves all the love and support for her beautiful work of Painter of the Night. But still, I hate the fact that I'm with until February 11, but I do love Yandak and she deserves sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, gonna be a long two weeks, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to follow my social media to be teased about some of the boys' love that I'm interested in. And please, please, please leave me a message or leave me a comment down below and converse with me. Because I really would love to hear back from you on what you think is going on in Painter of the Night. And please consider supporting the show by donating as little as 99 cents through www.zealedfujoshi.xyz. Also, don't forget to support the author. 
all the manual details can be found in the description below of this episode. Again, thank you so much and hope to see you next time.